What's up, Puyallup families? My name is Colin Henderson. I'm a mental performance coach, author, and speaker, and welcome back to this series, Mindset Matters, where we are prioritizing mental and emotional fitness. So lesson one was on resilience, lesson two was on confidence, and this lesson is on motivation. The feedback I'm getting from you know, students and parents and even um, teachers is like, sometimes it's just hard uh, to move and you feel sluggish and things are challenging. So today I'm going to break down the art and science of motivation. But first question, if you were to define the word success and look at what are the traits of successful people, what do successful people have inside of them, their mindset, their habits? Maybe pause this for a moment as a family and discuss what traits do successful people have? Well, one of my favorite books is Think and Grow Rich from Napoleon Hill. And the inspiration for this book was Napoleon Hill was studying people like Henry Ford, Rockefeller, Thomas Edison, the leader and the founder of the steel industry, Andrew Carnegie. And he found that these top performers who had this massive success had two common traits. I call this the equation of success. It's desire backed by faith, or what I call drive plus belief equals success. So the foundation of success is having that inner drive, that motor, that motivation to keep going, to endure, to persist, that hunger. So how is your motivation right now? And I love this quote from Plato. He says, the first and greatest victory is to conquer self. Now I'm going to give you three main roadblocks that are holding you back from motion and moving and having motivation. The first one is feelings. A lot of people think that these top performers, they always feel motivated and excited and confident. That's not true. You're not going to always feel confident and motivated. The second one is procrastination, putting things off, waiting and delaying taking action. We know that the top performers, they have a bias for action. Now the third challenge to be aware of is lack of clarity. A lack of motivation is a lack of clarity, as in goals, knowing your why, and the habits you need to do to execute. So let's learn from some other thought leaders in the Puyallup School District about motivation and how mindset matters. Attitudes are contagious. Are you that, a fountain or a drain? Are you a vitamin or a virus? So decide how, you, how you're going to show up, right? That's exactly it. You know, I work with my granddaughter on her Zoom meetings and, you know, her stuff like that. And she'll get down and I'll just make something like, come on, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's make this fun. And it's all about the energy. It, this is tough on everyone. No one has lived through this. And that's where I take that philosophy, like, let's, let's give it the best we have. We're going to get out of this thing. We're going to get out of it. But let's make the best of it while we're here. You know, my, my kiddos that are, we're working on the training room, and I know they can't come in there and see the things that, so I'm going in there and I'm moving stuff. But I'm letting them know, like, I, you're here with me. The energy that you provide on the screen, I'm going to go dump it into this training room. So when you come back, and you see the work that Mr. London's put in that room, you're going to enjoy it and you're going to feel part of it. Well, for parents, definitely it's about um, encouraging support for your kids. It's about making sure that your kids feel like they can come to you if there's an issue or they're feeling overwhelmed or stressed. Um, and having those type of kind words when your child is feeling at a level they can't really express themselves. It's the idea that you kind of say, I, I hear for you. I'm here for you. I support you. Um, and where are you at right now? What can we do to help you? Um, a lot of kids are having anxiety issues right now. And so the idea that we don't make it worse by kind of over exaggerating how they're feeling, but just kind of ask them where they're at and then recognize that and acknowledge it and then give them tools and, and options to get out of that situation. So usually anxiety is tied to fight or, fight or flight. And so it's the idea that either they can fight that situation that's bugging them or run away from it. And what we're seeing right now is that evolutionary wise, we didn't really need to fight anymore. There's no big animal that we're trying to get away from but the big animal is whatever fear it is that the child's facing so it could be they don't want to be on screen on zoom because they're afraid their teacher won't like their outfit or it could be something more intense like their friends are picking on them through a different channel of minecraft or fortnite or whatever it is mm -hmm. so we just need to kind of encourage our kids to be willing to come share with us and if they're not willing to do that there's staff here at school that can help them there's resources in the community that can help and families just need to be willing to reach out and ask for help if they need it. And kids need to be able to tell their parents when they're having a struggle and need to talk about something. All right, gang, welcome back to Mindset Matters. Great stuff from people in the Puyallup community teaching us about the importance of 
staying connected, learning, growing, and prioritizing your mental, emotional, wellness, and fitness. So back to that opening we talked about, you know, what is success? What's the equation? What do the top performers have? People who are happy, successful, thriving. Remember, the equation is drive plus belief equals success, or D plus B equals S. So I'm going to break down this drive or that motivation or that hunger. How do we cultivate motivation in our life? It comes down to a simple system I developed after researching what the best performers do. It's a system that I call G5, kind of like a, a private jet, a G5. Well, this is what I call G5, five elements of proper goal setting and motivation. That's where the G comes from. So exercise as a family, get a piece of paper and a pen, a notebook. Remember, don't just think it, ink it. We're getting some mental workouts in today. Let's be active with our mindset training. So I want you guys as a family to draw an airplane. Can you draw an airplane? Take out a piece of paper, do a quick maybe, you know, in one minute or less, who can draw the best airplane? Ready, set, go. Nice job. Show it around, see what you're able to create. Uh, that's awesome. So I'm gonna give you five elements. Now this was inspired again by G5. So this is a metaphor and think of goal setting and motivation like an airplane. The first part of having you know, an airplane, an aircraft, and going on a trip is you need to have a destination, you need to have a vision. So the first part of motivation is having a clear goal and a clear vision. So part of your motivation plan is have a vision. What do you want to accomplish this year? Have you written it down? Have that clear focus to have what's called the RAS in your brain, the reticular activating system. Having a target, it's like a heat-seeking missile for your subconscious to attract and get what you want. That's step number one. So step number two is why do you want that goal? And if you wanna dig even deeper, so you can have what's your goal for the year, what's your goal for the month, and maybe what are some, some big goals like long-term that you wanna hit? And then I want you to ask yourself, why do I want that goal? So the goal is the pull, the why is the push. And think about this, an airplane is never gonna leave a hangar without knowing where it's going. It knows this end, you know, I'm leaving SeaTac, I'm going to Phoenix, I'm going to Dallas. But the jet propulsion that pushes it forward, the fuel, is knowing why you want that goal. So here's the exercise. Ask yourself, what do I want this year? Write it down. And then ask yourself, why do I want it? That is the why. This is what I call why power. This is what's gonna give you that juice when you don't feel motivated or excited or into it. Know why you're doing what you do. Now here's a story to make having a vision and a why make sense. I love telling the story about Blake Mykoski. He was a business owner and an entrepreneur living in LA. And he was on a trip to Argentina to take some time away from work. But during that time in Argentina, he saw kids that did not have shoes. And he learned out the people in the village that they were dying from infections. So he went back to LA after grabbing some shoes and selling them. He came back with a business idea. He says, every shoe I sell, I'm going to give to a kid in need. So his vision, his goal was to have a lifestyle and a business that he can live off of. But really his why was making an impact on kids that don't have shoes. So the company Tom's was formed that he created. So every shoe he would sell, he would give to a kid in need. So do you have a clear vision for what you want, but you know why you want it. Now, what gives the airplane lift? It's the wings. So we can't just have a goal and a why and not take action. So step three is to have an action plan. So when you look at your goals for the year and after knowing your why, I want you to look at what are you know, three to five steps, some milestones that you can mark off starting small and building that you can start checking these off as the year goes by. When you start checking these things off, your brain gets dopamine hits, you build momentum and motivation, but here's the secret sauce with taking action. Remember the idea action gap? So your biggest you know, strength to get through not having this feeling of I'm motivated is remember one of the things to think about is feelings. You're not gonna always feel motivated. So the first thing I wanna teach you is this action part is what I call M3. And M3 is a system called movement, momentum, then motivation. It's not motivation first. So sometimes the first step is just get out of bed. Just open your laptop. If you want to work out, just put your socks on and your like 
running shoes on. Just take it one step at a time. And once you start building that movement, then you'll get momentum, then you'll feel motivation last. It's not motivation first. So part of this action plan is have some steps along the way, some milestones, you know, build your action plan from you know, easy to, to maybe more challenging to help you with your goal, but just know, have a bias for action. Just start moving. This is Newton's first law. An object in idle stays in idle, an object in motion stays in motion. Now the fourth key building your G5 goal setting motivation plan is understanding the power of habits. I want you to watch this quote. Show me your habits, I'll show you your future. So how are your daily habits, your daily routines? Have you identified these key behaviors to help you achieve your goal? And the question you should ask yourself is, you know, to help me achieve my goal, is this action, is this habit right now helping me achieve my goal? If it's not, then don't do it. So the process I want you to think about is, can you identify daily, weekly, and monthly habits that you commit to do? Now here's a quick story about the power of taking action and the power of identifying clear habits. This was inspired by Janet Evans. As a speaker, I get to travel the country and meet amazing speakers and people. I met Janet Evans a few years ago. She was a former USA Olympic athlete and she told me her story. When she was 13, 14 years old, she went to uh, the Olympics that were in LA at the time and she got so inspired to, to be an Olympic athlete. So she told her coach, I want to be an Olympic athlete. And he said, well, you have to change your habits. So the plan that, that he created for her was you're going to get up every morning at 4.30, swim six miles in the morning, six miles in the afternoon, do a half hour push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups every single day. Well, she committed to those habits. She had her clear habit plan. When she was 17 years old, she set a world record. And in Seoul, Korea in 88, she won three gold medals. So identify some habits for you that you commit to do. Have that plan. I love this concept. Design beats willpower. Now, the fifth one, the last one, is what I call to exercise. Not just exercise physically, but exercise mentally. So carve out time each day to close your eyes, go to the mind gym, and visualize yourself achieving these goals. Connecting to your why. Seeing these actions in your mind, checking them off, breaking down your habits and seeing yourself doing them. The brain cannot tell the difference between a real and imagined event. You're creating neural pathways, mental grooves to help your subconscious do these things and attract these goals. And the second part of how to exercise is read books, audiobooks, podcasts, mentors. Fill your mind with productive things, not negative things like negative news or negative people or just scrolling on TikTok, Instagram, which sometimes that's great, but fill your mind with productive, positive things. So let's go. I'm so excited for you. Go to your G5 plan. Have a vision. What's your goal for this year? What's, your, what's a monthly goal? What's a big goal in three to five years you want to see yourself hitting? Know why you want it. Take action, M3, movement, momentum, then motivation. Get clear on your habits. Show me your habits, I'll show you your, your future. And don't forget to go to the mind gym and exercise. That's going to carry you to your goal. That's gonna give you that clarity to execute your dreams. Let's go, you guys are amazing, you're awesome, I believe in you, and always remember this. The body has limits, but the mind is limitless. You are limitless, and always remember that mindset matters.